so with Euler circuits and Euler paths, one of the things we did after we looked at kind of the brute force method, for lack of a better term, of just trying to find one and wandering around and seeing if we found an Euler path or circuit, we found that Euler's theorem said if we had vertices that were all of even degree, we know that there's a circuit. Um, and if there are exactly two with odd degree, we know that there's a path. There's no such thing for Hamilton paths and circuits. We, there's no way to tell if for a graph in general. Um, it does just kind of take a trial and error method. However, there is one particular type of graph that we know um, there is a Hamilton circuit every single time. And that graph is called a complete graph. So every complete graph with more than two vertices has a Hamilton circuit. And it's gotta have more than two because again, if there are only two vertices, you like can't get back to necessarily where you started. We'll talk about more than two in a minute. Um, the number of Hamilton circuits in a complete graph, if there are n vertices, is n minus one quantity factorial. You'll remember our friend factorial from our unit in probability. So I said every complete graph with more than two vertices has a Hamilton circuit. It would probably be good to tell you what a complete graph is. So a complete graph is a graph that has an edge connecting every pair of vertices. Okay, so if we're looking at these six vertices that are here on the page, and we're going to draw a complete graph, we need to connect every single vertex to every other vertex. So I'm gonna use some colors to kind of help do this. So starting here at this vertex, I'm gonna connect this vertex to every other vertex. And I'm just gonna work my way in order, okay? Then I'm gonna move from that vertex where I just was, that guy right there, I'm gonna move to the right, and I'm gonna connect this vertex, the one to the right, to every other vertex that it hasn't already been connected to. So it's connected to the vertex immediately to its left, and then I'm just gonna keep, again, working my way around to all the vertices. Then I'm gonna to move to the right again, to the one I just checked with the green check mark, and I'm gonna connect that vertex to every other vertex. Then I'm gonna move around again, and I'm gonna connect this vertex here in the lower right region, I'm gonna connect it to every other vertex, so I've only got like a couple missing. And then last but not least, I'm gonna grab that final vertex, well it looks like, doesn't look like the final one I realized, but it's only not connected to the one kind of over there at roughly the nine o'clock position on a clock. And so at that point, they're all connected up, okay? So that's what a complete graph looks like with six vertices anyway. And then the next question says, how, how many Hamilton circuits does the graph have? Well, in this case, there are N is six different vertices. And so our formula says that the number of circuits is n minus one factorial, or in this case, six minus one factorial, which is five factorial, or there would be 120 different Hamilton circuits you could write down. So when I tell you that answers may vary, truly, answers may vary, there would be 120 possible answers to that question, name a Hamilton circuit, okay? I'm more likely to say how many Hamilton circuits are there than to ask you to name one. Too many possibilities on an answer key. All right, so with Hamilton circuits, our focus is not gonna be on just, hey, is there one, but on the question of optimization, okay? The question of optimization. Can we find the most efficient solution to a problem? And this problem actually, in general, has become so, f so famous, they call it the traveling salesperson problem. Um, and most efficient, again, it doesn't have to refer necessarily to a salesperson, but it might refer to how, how far you traveled. It might refer to how much time it takes you to get there. It might refer to the cost, maybe the, the gas money, the plane tickets, the train tickets, whatever. Um, just to name a few, there are lots of possibilities of things that could come up. 
So let's um, take a look at a salesperson. We'll keep that, keep that analogy going here that lives in Seattle. And this person needs to give a sales pitch in four different cities, Dallas, Atlanta, Chicago, and LA. So she looks up the airfare between all those pairs of cities and makes a graph. So notice this is a complete graph. Every edge is connected, um, or every vertex is connected to every other vertex by an edge. This is called a weighted graph because numbers, or in this case, dollar figures, the cost of the plane ticket has been assigned to the edges, okay? Um, the weight has nothing to do with the length of the edge that you actually draw, all right? So a, short, a shorter edge does not mean it costs less. It could cost way more. Um, it just means that that's the way we've drawn our picture. So pay attention to the numbers, not the length of the edges, okay? So is this a complete graph? Yes, indeed there are. And if so, how many different Hamilton circuits would it have? Well, there are five vertices in this graph. And so there would be five minus one or four factorial Hamilton circuits for 24 different circuits. Okay, so the question is, out of all those 24 different circuits, how is it that we find that optimal solution? Like, do we have to try all 24? Find all 24 different ways you could start in Seattle and, you know, or start in Dallas or start in LA? No, okay, we don't. There are going to be some methods we use and that's going to be the subject of the next couple of videos.